CM193 comes with a selection of samples over 2 gigabytes worth from those clever guys at Sample Phonics. You can find more information on their sample packs at www.samplephonics.com and in this video tutorial we're going to be demonstrating how to use some of the samples to create a track. We're going to put together the track in Ableton Live 9. You could use any door with some basic effects. We've included the Live 9 project file and step-by-step -step samples on the cover DVD and within the Vault download. So let's get started. We've already loaded up Ableton Live 9 and we're going to set our tempo of the track to 125 BPM. The style we're going for is kind of jazzy house and we're just going to use the sample phonic samples here. So let's start off with MIDI track 1. This is going to be our kick track. And we'll load an instance of Live Sampler Sample Player. With Live 9 it's really easy to find what you want. You just type it into the search bar and we'll drag that in. We'll need a kick drum sample for the sampler so we'll head to Vulcan Sky Dark Dub and Glitch and we'll use Kick Hissy SPO1.wav. So next we'll program a really basic 4 4 kick pattern by inserting MIDI clip and programming that in on C3. And we'll make those maximum velocity and repeat that section for 16 bars. Next we'll add a compressor and EQ the kick drum track to shape the sound a little bit. We'll go for a preset in live and choose the drums kick compressor and just drop that onto the effects pane. You can see how that's shaping the sound. We'll just drop the level of the track to uh, minus 1.5 dB just to give us a bit of headroom. Let's also EQ the kick track and we'll use Live's EQ8. We're only going to need to use nodes 3 and 4 so we'll actually disable 5 and 6. And we'll set the lowest node number 3 to a frequency of 80 Hz. You can be more exact just by typing it in. Q0.7 is actually fine and we'll set a gain of 2.5 dB. Just gives us a little bump towards the low end. We'll set node 4 to give us a bit of space for the bass line. Frequency of 200 Hz, minus 5 dB gain and a Q value of 1.8. This is where the bass will sit in our track so it doesn't conflict with the kick. So let's add the bass now. We're going to use a loop from Toby Baker Retro Keys and we'll choose instant 130C bass and we'll drop that onto an audio track. Just get rid of these other tracks that we don't need. So we'll change the warping mode on this to complex and that will improve the quality of Live's automatic time stretching and give us fewer artifacts. The original riff is uh, 8 bars long as you can see here. We're actually going to use the first two bars here, repeat them and then let it play out to bar 4. And we'll duplicate that to make 16 bars. Set the volume down to minus 7.5. That should balance with the kick. Now let's use some sidechain compression within Live to sidechain the bass line to the kick so that it ducks the volume slightly on each beat. We'll use the glue compressor for this, which is Ableton Live's new compressor. Sounds really nice. Just drop that onto the bass track. And we'll open the sidechain options by clicking on this arrow just here. Turn sidechain on and have our kick as the input. Now we'll play this through and dial down the threshold so we can see that being affected. About minus 24 dB is fine. I will increase the makeup gain to 3 just to compensate for that.
These two sound good together, so let's add some uh, Rhodes keys. We use the ones from the same collection that actually match the uh, baseline Instant 130C Rhodes SP. And we'll do the same editing on this as well two bars, two bars, four bars, and repeat. It's got a few artifacts there because of the time stretching. So, again, we'll change the uh, warp mode to complex. We'll set the volume at minus 5.5 so that balances with our other tracks. And we'll use the sidechain compression that we had on the bass line. Just copy and pasting that over. It's a little bit loud and pumping a little bit too much, so we'll turn the makeup gain down to just 1 dB. So, next up, we're going to add a tune snare to our track. We'll create a new MIDI track for this, and just like our kick drum track, we'll use Sampler. And this will trigger the snare. The snare we're going to pull out of a loop that's already been written. We're going to use one from the Granular Structures collection and it's 90 Drums and Rhythms SP03.wav. So let's have a listen. That one's quite good, uh, so we'll go for that one. We'll drag the start and end points of that loop to enclose just that snare. We can zoom in to uh, try and get the start a bit more accurate. There we go, that's got it. Sounds a bit dry on its own, so we'll add a um, preset from the reverb selection in live, and we'll go for garage. We'll dial down that wet dry level to about 40%. I will insert a new MIDI clip and just program a simple snare pattern. Just like the kick at maximum velocity, and we'll duplicate that over 16 bars. Now let's just try and tune that with the rest of the track. Sounds good. So if we transpose it down to F sharp 2, that sounds about right with the rest of the track. Now I'll just bring the volume down slightly to balance that out with the rest of the tracks. Let's have a listen. We'll just add a few extra samples to fill out the rhythm section. Um, so a couple of top loops would be good for this. We'll head to the Tech House Loops Tools selection and we'll go for 125 THLT Top Loop SP74. Just drag that into our track and we'll just duplicate that and drop the level to. Just duplicate that track and we'll add another top loop. We'll go for, actually we'll go for the Granular Structures collection and uh, 120 Rhythmic SP14. See how that sounds. The first little bit isn't great, so uh, we'll just use the second bar.
and this will be very subtle, we'll drop that to a minus 12 dB. Sounds good. So we've got a basic groove going. Uh, let's add in the detail that will really make our track interesting. We want to add a funky little guitar. So we'll uh, create a new audio track. And we'll use a track from Ray Russell Guitar Session. We're going to go for 100 Shimmy V1 C SB01. Just drop that onto the track. See how it sounds. Totally out of tune. So we'll uh, push the transpose up on that. complex as well. That sounds good but we're not going to use all of that uh, riff, we'll just use the first couple of notes. Now we're going to do some quite precise chopping here. Just going to use the first two notes, we're going to repeat the first one twice. and then use the second one. Sounds a bit strange. That's better. So use that just before the uh, fourth beat of our track. We'll see how that looks all together. Maybe we don't need those ones actually. Let's just have it four times. Sounds good timing wise, but it's a bit dry, so we can help this guitar sit in the mix a bit better. First, let's uh, turn down the volume to minus 8 dB, and we'll add a delay plugin. Live's got a great one called Simple Delay. We'll set the left channel just here to 2 and the right channel to 4. This will mean that the guitar stays in time with the beat. And we'll change the feedback level to 40% and the dry wet dial to 30. This will make the effect more subtle. Uh, we'll also add a flanger to give a bit more interest. We actually want the one from Live's Frequency Shift plugin folder, so let's have a hunt for that. There we go. And we'll change the frequency dial up to uh, about 1.56. This will add a few extra harmonics. Sounds good. So now let's add a kind of sexy, smooth saxophone to our tune. We'll start with a new audio track and we'll use the sax from the Snake David sax collection. And we'll actually use uh, two samples, I think 125C10 at SP01.wav and 125D minor 10 at SP07.wav. And we'll place those like this. <laughs> And just like the guitar, they're totally out of tune, so uh, let's see if we can fix that. We'll just get the warping to complex again, and transpose the first one down. Four semitones is fine. Second one. Minus two semitones seems to be about right. 
So I'll duplicate those. And let's squash the dynamics of these saxes a little bit to help them stand out in the mix. We'll add a basic compressor from live. We'll push the ratio up to uh, 6-1. And a threshold of about minus 22 seems to squash those enough. Let's give the saxes some ambience as well. We'll um, use the vocal hall reverb preset. And a ping pong stereo delay. And we'll set the uh, dry wet dials to about 30% on both of these. At the moment the delay is kind of coming in on triplets there, so we'll just change that as well to 4. And we'll drop the level of the sax track as well to uh, minus 9. So I've got a great section now, so let's start to work on the structure of our short tune. We'll move the section that we've already done and we'll create a 16 bar intro before that. So we'll move it to bar 17 and for the intro we'll use a soundscape from the organic loops elements folder. That's just here. And we'll go for 125 C sharp at your full. This one. It's a very long kind of soundscape, as you can hear. So we need to change the warp mode. It's complex again. We'll drop it to minus one semitone, which will make it in tune with the rest of our track. And just pull the level down to minus 13 dB. have it cut out just one bar before the main track kicks in. We'll also add a bit of rhythm by uh, using this top loop and we'll run that from bar 5 to bar 16. So we're going to do some more work on our intro. We're going to add a synth loop, and this will create a build over the first 16 bars. So let's use something from Electro Synth Progression, and we'll go for pumping 127G SP04. This is a big synth loop, so uh, we'll need to do some editing. We'll drop the level to minus 12 dB, and we'll transpose it so that it's in tune. And again, we'll just change the warp mode to complex. And we're only going to use a small section. Um, the section will be, I think, uh, this one here from uh, 1.2 to 1.4. So let's just edit that out. Great. So we're going to use this for our build up. And the repetition is going to get faster and faster.
and the last section here we're going to have to chop those in half and in half again get rid of that one so that's good but uh, let's make those fit into the mix we'll add some effects and automation to do this Firstly, we use live simple uh, three band EQ plugin, EQ3. And we don't need uh, any low frequencies really, so we'll turn that all the way down. And uh, we'll automate the mid dial so that that increases. And we'll also add the uh, large hall reverb preset. And we're going to automate this so that there's lots of reverb at the start of the sequence and that eventually disappears by the end, making a harsher sound. Uh, so we'll start at 50%. Sounds good. We'll also add a ping pong delay just to soften that sound a bit. And we'll set a dry wet mix of uh, 30% and push the delay frequency up to uh, 7.5k. So that's a good intro. We'll add a couple of effects here just to uh, give some emphasis to the drop. And we'll use a couple from the uh, Splinter FX folder. 125 Sparks SP01 and One Shot SP01. I'll drop the level of that track to uh, minus 14 dB so the effects don't overpower things. Just extend that soundscape to the end of those uh, synths, sound a little bit better. The last thing we're going to add is uh, a little vocal. There's a selection here from Dance Diva Angie Brown. And we're going to use uh, this one, uh, 125G Dibbidi Doo. And it does sound like uh, Dibbidi Doo as well. So just cut off that little bit at the start. There we go, a couple of changes just so it fits into the mix. We'll knock it down two semitones so that it's in tune. And about minus 30 cents as well. We're just going to tighten up the warp markers on that so that it falls uh, in line with the beats. Turn warp on, 
place one walk marker there and the second one just here. Drag that to the beat. That's great, complex warping. And we'll just turn that down to uh, minus 8 dB. And we'll copy the plugins from the sax track, the uh, reverb and the ping pong. So this is almost our finished track. We're going to have a little bit of a tinker just to uh, add some spice to some various parts. Firstly, we'll um, get rid of the first two saxophone parts. And we'll add some of the synth back into the track. Because we've automated the reverb, we'll need to fix that. Finally, let's uh, add a couple of plugins to the master channel so we can get our track nice and loud and pumping. We'll use the glue compressor and the mastering make it loud preset. We'll increase that make up to 7 dB. And we'll adjust the release to 0.4, which gives it a more pumping feel. So this isn't too crazy, let's uh, dial down the dry wet to 80%. Lastly we'll add a limiter. And we'll set a 2 dB gain on that, just so it clips the peaks. So this is the version of the track that you'll find in the CM Tutorials folder, and we've just tidied up the automation a little bit. 